Hi folks, you're with Tassus today at your pushback channel. Now we're going to try something just a little bit different. So this essay is the first of a series of short videos Tassus today will do where we address a specific question that appears to vex most of those in cyberspace and YouTube and we're going to try and explain it all in under four minutes or less than 600 words following the preamble. Now the first essay or the first question is are Asians smarter than other races, including whites? And do Asians in reality have a higher IQ than all other races, as many folks suggest? Now, having worked closely with and studied with many Asians all across Asia, different countries in Asia, different regions, and in their home setting in Asia, and also when Asians are in the West for many years, I can state for the record, if Asians are smarter than whites, at least in the environment I was in, they did an expert job of hiding it. Now let me digress for a moment, and this is to prepare for the next point. In a Tokyo nightclub some years ago, a, a local guy, uh, about 30 years old I guess, was playing and singing a set of 11 Beatles songs, what seemed like quite above average English. All in all, he was very good. It was like he had lived in England for some time. Even in the song Penny Lane, you know the line where McCartney sings the barber shaves another customer? He captured perfectly the oo sound of the Northern English accent. His playing also was quite good. Crisp chord changes, although I noticed he was not making the classic chord shapes, but rather was using some full guitar neck bar chord system that he had clearly improvised. He was so good that when he was done and he was packing up, I went over to him and congratulated him, but quickly realised he did not speak a word of English, not one word of English. What's more, he could not read a note of music. Okay, so how could he word perfect and sound perfect rattle off 11 songs in English? This is where what we see or perceive as the Asian IQ advantage kicks in. He had busted his ass listening to the songs, memorising and copying every sound. He didn't know a single word or even where a word started and ended. He had just memorised every verbal and musical sound and regurgitated it without having the slightest clue as to what he was doing. He knew squat about English and squat about music. There are those who may write this achievement off, that is, that doing these 11 Beatles songs is merely a monkey see, monkey do. But it's more than that. The Asian way in education and particularly exam preparation, is to copy, cram, super intense swatting up, short-term memorising, and all without any practical comprehension or appreciation of circumstances or even informational relativity. It's a form of tunnel vision where much of the peripheral vision or wider spatial awareness is sacrificed for that narrow laneway up ahead. Now, Asians, particularly Japanese, but also South Koreans and some Chinese, including some of those from the subcontinent, often do well in exams because of this deeply ingrained copy and replicate learning methodology, which gives the appearance of higher IQ upon regurgitation at, at exam time. Practical application, particularly where variable circumstances with downstream effects are in play reveal the limitations of such an educational approach. Anecdotally, the cram and copy Asian would keep walking into a wall because that was where the open doorway was supposed to be. Until they were formally told the doorway was somewhere else, they could not make the adjustment or take the corrective action to act and behave differently. It was a source of constant amazement at how often a detailed explanation of an obvious material and game-changing development and alteration and the consequences of such had to be laid out in the childlike logic before it was grasped by many Asians. Anything that deviated from the tight script, no matter how small, required almost a virtual retraining from the ground up. It was very difficult for them to change midstream and change direction or take in additional information, which in turn would change the original starting point. Similarly, with software programmers from, for example, the subcontinent, only a handful seem to be able to think laterally and adjust for change circumstances, or must ponderously go through an entire and lengthy process before realising the starting point has varied, and thus the work that ensues must also vary. To be sure, additional factors feed into this total equation, such as Asian respect for authority and family and a maniacal fear of losing face. 
However, and tellingly, since the Mercantile Age, it is the West Europeans, the white West Europeans, who have had innovated and have had a higher per capita GDP and productivity output than any region of Asia until the 1970s and the rise of Japan. Even today, more than half of the greater Asian region is populated with struggling or a basket case economies. Asian IQ, no matter how high it is or or how high we think it is, has an appalling track record at translating into non-corrupt, non-crony commercial wealth. For practical IQ, white Europeans are still streets ahead of the pack. I wonder if that annoys the globalists. I hope this explanation of Asian IQ usefully informs viewers. Please put your thoughts below and keep a lookout for our next video. You've been with Tacitus today and thank you for listening.